Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, we're going to learn how to use string formatting in Python. So in a previous video, we covered strings. In this video, we're going to go into a lot of depth on how to format strings in print statements in Python. It's very powerful, but very easy to use. It's a cool tool to be able to use the format function in Python. I'm going to show you how to use that to format not only strings, but also numerical values. Everything from integers to floating point values to binary and hexadecimal values. So you're going to see what a powerful tool this is and how to use it in Python. And as usual, I'll post my Jupyter Notebook on my LinkedIn site, and I'll put the link down below so you can download that and run the code yourself. Now if you want some more documentation, you're going to see links here to the official docs and also some more documentation here, which I think is better than the string docs. So shout out to the guys out here at uh, pyformat.info who did such a fantastic job of their documentation. I think it's easier to follow than the official docs are, but I put both links here for you. So let's walk through uh, one example at a time so you can learn how to format strings in Python. We're going to start out by replacing a string with just positional arguments. So our format function looks like this. A string, including curly braces, followed by dot format, and then parentheses with some parameters here inside the parentheses. And in this case, all we have is one variable, first name. So first name is just the string Alex, and this is going to enable us to pass the contents of this variable, first name, into this curly brace. So in other words, when Python executes this print statement, it's going to substitute for the curly braces the contents of this variable, which is the string Alex. So what we get as an output is my name is Alex. And what we see in the print statement is my name is curly braces. So you see how curly braces is replaced with the contents of this string, Alex. So that one's pretty simple, right? This is, there's, it's a positional argument. There's only one variable here. Now in the second example, we have two variables. We have first name, comma, last name. So what Python does in this case, it sees first name and it says, okay, this is an index of zero then. This is the first one. Last name, okay, we're gonna give that an index of one. And so when we see curly braces, this is the first curly brace. So whatever is index zero is gonna be substituted into that. And then the second curly brace, well, guess what? The second positional argument is gonna be substituted right into that. So what we get is my name is Alex Marshall is our output. So it's just straight substitution in the order that you pass the arguments in. There's nothing confusing about that. Next example, we can use indices. If let's say you wanted to change up the order, or maybe you want to use that same string multiple times in a single sentence. So in the first example, I put indices zero and one. Well, that's basically that's the default, right? That's exactly what Python's going to do by default. The very first curly brace is going to be replaced with the contents of this string, this variable. And the second curly brace, which we have a one, is going to be replaced with last name. So we get my name is Alex Marshall. This is basically, this is the default. So this is kind of redundant to put numerical indices in there. But in the second example, you see that we swap those. We want to put last name first. We pass the arguments in first name, comma, last name, the same as we did in the last one. But now we put one in the first curly brace and zero in the second curly brace. And we can also see that we use the zero twice, which means our first name is going to appear in both of those two places where we have a zero. So what the result we get is my name is Marshall, comma, Alex, first name Alex. So you see the curly brace zero means first name to Python, and curly brace one means last name to Python, because this is the second variable that was passed in inside the format function. So numerical indices is another way of passing in arguments to the format function. Now let's look at alignment. We can align these substrings as left, right, or middle. And we do that by putting uh, colon left arrow, colon right arrow, or colon up arrow inside of the curly braces. So the default we already saw is align left. 
And so when we, we put this first example here, we have cases 5, 16, and 294, so there's three numbers. Both of these two do exactly the same thing. This means a line left, but so does this. They both mean a line left. So the default, not putting anything in the curly braces, is going to a line left. So you see the result we get is exactly the same thing printed in both examples, because this tells Python to align left, but the default is also align left. So um, that's the align left. When you use align right or align center, you need to tell Python how much padding you want. And padding is an integer. It's not in, it's not a, a letter, it's, a, it's an integer. So um, let's look at some of the examples for the padding. Align right with five total spaces. What does five total spaces mean? Well, this means the number of spaces for the integer plus the blank spaces. So that means there's going to be four blank spaces plus one space for the integer. For 16, there's going to be three blank spaces and one space for the, or two spaces for the integer. And for this 294, there's three spaces for the number. So there's going to be two blank spaces. So the integer plus the blank spaces takes up five total spaces. That's what the padding tells it. So when we print um, colon right arrow five, that means that integer plus blank spaces is five. And we can see these are nice and neatly aligned right. You want to make sure that the integer that you pass in is at least as long as the longest integer, right? Here we have a three-digit integer is our longest one, so we used five for our padding. If we'd only used two or something, it wouldn't look very good. And we can align center. It does pretty much the same way. Uh, the, only, the only thing that's off a little is that if you have an even number of digits and an odd number of padding, then you get one blank space before and two blank spaces after. Uh, but yeah, you can see here we got one blank space before the three digit number, one blank space after, two blank spaces before the single digit number, and two blank spaces after. So the align center works pretty much the same way. And for integers and floats, d basically is a decimal value. That means integer to Python. So when we see colon D, we are going to pass in an integer. When we see colon F, we're going to pass in a floating point value. And then we can also pass in um, padding as well. So 5D. And again, the 5 tells Python that's the total number of spaces that we want for both the floating point or, or um, integer value plus blank spaces. So let's take a look at the example. Length equals 26. That's an integer. And then we print uh, length is colon D. And we pass in length. So we get exactly what we would expect there, right? And so for the second example, we have a line right, padding equals 6, and it's an integer. So what do we put inside the curly braces? Colon right arrow. That says a line right. Six spaces total for the padding, including the integer and the blank spaces. And D is where we're going to substitute in our length variable, so 26. So you see we have 26 preceded by four blank spaces, and then there's an additional blank space right here. So five blank spaces and then the 26. And the next one we used a named variable. This is called a named variable. We can say age equals 8. So in this one we define the variable first and then just passed it in. Here we put a name variable inside the format function call, age equals 8. And then when we, inside the curly braces, we put the name of that variable, age, colon, see the name of the variable goes before the colon, and then up arrow says center, we want a total of five padding spaces for the, both the, the number and the spaces. And then D is the integer value that we're going to pass in. So that's the 8. So here we center the 8. And you can see that period I put after it. You get, what, two blank spaces before and two blank spaces after, plus this blank space here. That's how alignment works, left, right, center, and the padding. Integer with commas. If you want to put commas inside of your longer integer so it's more readable. So here we just passed in a six-digit integer, and we say comma d, colon, comma d, 
tells Python to insert commas every three digits. And we can see the result there. For floating point values, let's see, radius equals 4.78. So we have two decimal places. Um, the default, you can put in, uh, pass in radius, just colon F, pass in that floating point value. What happens with the default? Well, Python adds its own padding of six decimal places. So it puts an additional four zeros after our two decimal places that we had in our number. So a lot of times we may not want that. So the way around that is to put colon 0.1f if we only want to see 0.1, one decimal place, or 0.2f if we want to see two decimal places. So this will round it. This is going to round it to one decimal place. And we see the result here is radius is 4.8 inches because Python is going to do the rounding to one decimal digit for us. And if we want to see some padding around our float, we can set padding equal to 6. And it's going to pad that with leading zeros because we put 0, 6. If we don't put the 0 there, we're not going to get the leading zeros. But you can have a leading character. The 6 tells it how many padding spaces we want, including the number, the decimal place, and the, and the padding digits. The 0 says, this is what I want to pad it with, pad it with leading zeros. And then it says how many decimal places we want. One decimal place. And in the next example, we get um, 0.5f, which is padding of five decimal places. So here we didn't put anything before the decimal place. It's going to still show the four. It's going to show us a total of five decimal places. So 0.5f will show us five decimal places. If we want to see positive and negative signs for either integer or floating point value, we can use, uh, there's two different ways of doing this. We can, one option is to put the plus sign, in which case Python will always either show the plus or the negative, depending on the sign of the integer or the, the floating point value. So plus says always show the sign. Minus says only show the sign if it's negative. So don't show a sign if it's positive. And you can see in the example here, C is 33. So you do not see the plus sign before the 33. And these second examples basically do the same thing. You can avoid showing the positive sign if you want, or you can force it to show the positive sign in this case. So let's, uh, we looked at named placeholders real quick. Let's take a deeper look at named placeholders. You can pass in named placeholders here. Um, we're going to use variables with strings. The one we did up above was an integer. Name equals Mikhail and job equals Carpenter. And then when we want to print out, we put in curly braces this variable name, right, which is name, and this variable name, which is job. This way we can substitute in multiple variables, however many we want, into our string, and we'll substitute those in. And the result we get is Mikhail is a Carpenter. Uh, in the next example, I'll caution you, Python is not able to decode this. So you cannot use the same variable name here, here in the function call for format, and here. You cannot put the same variable name in all three places. That's going to confuse Python. So that's not going to work. You're going to get an error. The way around this is either this, you, put your, you define your variable value inside the format function call, or... If you want to do this way, right, where you define your variables outside and then uh, use similar variable names inside, the, the trick here is to say in equals name, j equals job, right? So you're still using these variables, but inside of the print function, you're using in and j. So this will work because we're basically dereferencing the name and the job. We're going to use a second reference to those variables and using those instead in the print function. Or a, an even cleaner way to do this is to use a dictionary. So here we have jobs equals name, Mikhail, job, carpenter. This is just a standard Python dictionary assigned to this variable name called jobs. And then we pass in our dictionary using star star jobs, which tells Python, hey, pass in this dictionary, but unpack the contents of it 
inside of this parentheses here for this function call. Then it knows what name is and it knows what job is and it can do the substitution. So this works fantastically. Just use a regular Python dictionary and then unpack it in your function call for format using star star operator. You can also pass in a list. Here we have scores equals, uh, there's four different values in that list. And again, we need to use a separate reference. S equals scores. We can't just put scores here and scores here. But when we do S equals scores, we get another reference to this scores list. And then we can use S inside here. And all the standard indexing will work just fine. So here we get an index of 1, which is going to give us the value of 96. Scientific notation is pretty straightforward, just a colon E. You can use a lowercase e or an uppercase e, uh, and you're going to get basically the same thing in your output, right? If you use a lowercase e in your print statement, you're, you're going to see a lowercase e in the output. And if you use an uppercase e in your print statement, you're going to see an uppercase e in the output. They bas basically do the same thing, though. They're going to give you scientific notation, just colon e. Binary and hexadecimal, oh, there's also octal, uh, but you can use a colon B for a binary, colon X for a hexadecimal, and colon uppercase X for uppercase hexadecimal. So if we want to convert, let's say, 79 to a binary format, we just use colon B and we pass in an integer, 79, and Python converts that to this binary value. And the hex hexadecimal, we can pass in any decimal number, in this case 183, into the format function. And we use colon uppercase x, and it will print it out as the hexadecimal with an uppercase b. If we wanted to see a lowercase b, again, we could use a lowercase x. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.